Top 10 Best Movies of 2021. A film often known as a movie, motion picture, or moving picture is a work of visual art that uses moving images to replicate experiences such as ideas, tales, perceptions, feelings, beauty, or ambience. Sound and, on rare occasions, other sensory stimulations accompany these visuals. The term cinema, short for cinematography, is frequently used to refer to filmmaking and the film industry as well as the art form that results from them. In this video, we are counting down our picks for the 10 best action movies of 2021 so far. Before we move on to the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon so that you can be updated by my new videos. So let's begin the countdown. Number 10, No Time to Die. On production's spy film No Time to Die is to be released in 2021. It is the 25th installment in the James Bond series. In the film, Daniel Craig reprises his role as James Bond for the fifth and the last time. The CIA enlists Bond to free a kidnapped scientist in this film, which leads to a showdown with a powerful antagonist. Madeline Swann is a young girl who witnesses her mother's assassination attempt on her father's life by Lutzfer Safin. The days when a new Bond picture seemed like it was starting over with the character and his universe as a standalone action film are long gone. No Time to Die appears to follow the Marvel Cinematic Universe paradigm of referencing past installments to give the appearance that everything that happens here was pre-planned. You don't have to have seen the first four films to enjoy this one, but it will be nearly impossible if you haven't, especially Spectra, to which this is a direct sequel. Bond blames Swan for what happened in Italy. Believing she betrayed him, and the arc is repeated five years after the prologue, with James off the grid. Bond returns to the fold after the deadly theft of a weaponized virus that can target a specific person's DNA, though he is initially aligned with the CIA through Felix Leader, a wonderfully laid-back Jeffrey Wright, and a new face named Logan Ash. The film will be released on October 8, 2021. Number 9. Dune Denis Villeneuve's Dune is an American epic science fiction film directed by Denis Villeneuve and written by John Spitz Villeneuve and Eric Roth that was released in 2021. It's the first half of a two-part adaption of Frank Herbert's novel from 1965. Dune, also known as Dune Part 1, is a projected two-part adaption of Frank Herbert's 1965 novel of the same name directed by Denis Villeneuve. The first installment will cover the first half of the book, with an emphasis on Iraqis. Throughout, the filmmaker working with amazing technicians, including cinematographer Greg Fraser, production designer Patrice Vermeid, manages to walk the thin line between grandeur and pomposity in between such unabashed, thrill-generating sequences as the Jom Jabbar test. The Spice Herber rescue, the Thopter in a storm nail bitter, and various sandworm encounters and attacks. Number 8. Free Guy Free Guy is a 2021 American science fiction action comedy film directed by Sean Levy, based on a screenplay by Matt Liberman and Zach Penn, and a story by Liberman. Guy appears in the video game Free City as a non-player character. He works as a bank teller alongside Buddy, his best friend, and the bank's security guard. Guy meets Millie in the stash, a secure storage facility for her source court. The Trinity to his Neo the two create an alliance to rip Free City apart from the inside out, beginning with Guy's refusal to rise up the ranks through violence. By bringing out the innate charisma of his ensemble, Levy keeps the strongest sections of Free Guy going. Calmer is a real breakthrough, charismatically holding together both the action-driven scenes as Molotov Girl and the more character-driven ones as Millie. Reynolds can do this kind of charming action hero in his sleep, but Comer is a real breakthrough charismatically holding together both the action-driven scenes as Molotov, Girl, and the more character-driven ones as Millie. Although it's good to see the likable Joe Carey earn his biggest movie role to date, she's undoubtedly the best thing about the film. Unfortunately, in the second half of the film, both give a little too much screen time to an overacting Vaititi, who hits the same unfunny beats over and again and again, and ends up feeling more cartoonish than the actual NPCs. Number 7. The Many Saints of Newark. Alan Taylor directed The Many Saints of Newark, which was released in 2021 and was written by David Chase and Lawrence Connor. While Tony stands by and observes, Tony and Giuseppina Daimio 
get caught up in a firefight with Harold and his gang, the Daimyos as well as Johnny and Junior. It's a prequel to Chase's HBO crime thriller, The Sopranos, and it takes place in 1960s and the 1970s Newark, New Jersey. But it must also stand alone as a gripping story about family, loyalty, and criminality, particularly of the Italian-American gangster sort. Beyond that, this film has another goal, to convey something substantial about racial relations and black criminality in the context of the late 1960s urban violence wave that shook the country. With Newark being one of the hardest hit cities, the expansiveness of The Sopranos allowed for more and more authorial detachment and acting complexity as the series progressed, developing in smarts and sophistication even before the first season ended. Number 6. Venom. Let There Be Carnage. It is a 2021 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character Venom, produced by Columbia Pictures in partnership with Marvel and Tencent Pictures. In 1996, Cletus Cassati watches helplessly as his sweetheart, Frances Barrison, is abducted from St. Estates home for unwanted children and taken to Ravencroft Institute. He has another chance to rule San Francisco's journalism, such a quaint notion that people actually read newspapers and follow specific reporters, this time by securing an interview with convicted killer Cletus Cassati, a scene reaching Haraldson, who is about to be executed at San Quentin State Prison. However, because Eddie's reporting resulted in Cletus' death by lethal injection, the two men have a physical altercation that results in bloodshed and the transfer of a few drops of symboid material. As if we needed another reason to keep our distance of six feet, in a smart twist, such startlingly loud noises impair Venom and Carnage. However, for some reason, the two symboids can roar at each other during the fight like kaiju rampaging through Tokyo, and it doesn't hurt them. It could be a different pitch, frequency or something else. In any case, Cletus's reunion with the woman he's loved since childhood, as seen in a flashback, is never as compelling as Eddie's ever-changing bond with Venom. Number 5. Lycoris Pizza Paul Thomas Anderson wrote and directed the upcoming comedy drama Lycoris Pizza. The film stars Alana Haim, Cooper Hoffman, Sam Penn, Tom Waits, Bradley Cooper, and Benny Safdie. It relates the story of a teen actor and a young woman who met in the San Fernando Valley in the 1970s and fell in love. Alana Kane and Gary Valentine are followed in the film Like a Rice Pizza as they grow up, run around, and fall in love in the San Fernando Valley in 1973. The film follows a young woman's difficult journey through her first love. Number 4. The Guilty The Guilty is a 2021 American crime thriller film directed and produced by Anthony Fuqua, based on a screenplay by Nick Pizzolatto. Joe Baylor, a disturbed LAPD cop, works the night shift at a 911 call center in the film. He gets a call from Emily Lighton, who tells him that she has been kidnapped. The core of this thriller is nearly identical, right down to the smart little prologue that establishes our protagonist as flawed while simultaneously introducing a new, very Californian environment. On the night shift at a 911 dispatch center, we meet Joe Baylor, Guylan Hell, as his city of Los Angeles burns on giant screens in the background. He's also dealing with an unspecified controversy that has resulted in calls from reporters after this LAPD officer was demoted to a dispatcher. Finally, he's struggling with his family's separation, attempting to phone his daughter merely to say goodnight. Of course, this is mostly a taut genre exercise that Hitchcock would have adored. It has a forced perspective that is comparable to that of Rare Window, if you think about it. Number 3. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, based on Marvel Comics, is a 2021 American superhero film featuring Shang-Chi thousands of years ago. Shu Wen Wu discovers the famous Ten Rings that grant immortality and almighty abilities. Shang-Chi works as a valet, alongside his best friend Katie, who is completely oblivious of his past. They are escorted to the Ten Rings compound, where Wen Wu uses the pendants to show a mysterious map leading to Talo. They meet Lai's sister, Ying Nan, who informs them about Talo's past. Water fills from walls, hovers in the air, and forms a map of icicles, a dramatic manner of expressing a moment that would normally be represented by a hologram. The film even has a lovely animated cute sidekick that deftly subverts the stereotype of plush-looking sidekicks with cute faces. The most prominent use of CGI, the kind that need 
Black Clouds as seen in Avengers Endgame's Great Battle is saved for the final enormous climax which is such an over the top ecstatic roller coaster ride that you can help but root for it. Number 2 The Starling The Starling is a comedy drama film written by Matt Harris and directed by Theodore Melfi that is to be released in 2021. After their young daughter died of SIDS, the Maynards, a married couple, are in mourning. Chris O'Dowd is in a residential mental institution while Lily, Melissa McCarthy, is at home alone, dealing with their own thoughts. Before Jack returns home, a counselor at Jack's hospital that Lily seek help for her own mental health, putting Jack's suffering ahead of her own. Jack and Lily have returned to their old home and are once again braving the world together. This takes her to the clinic of a local veterinarian, Kevin Clean, who was once a therapist, but now has a jaded attitude towards the field. With the bird subplot, his new career will come in handy, but he's also Lily's unusual counsel, someone who can communicate to her without the barriers that his prior occupation erected. Number 1. Malignant Malignant is a supernatural horror film directed by James Wan and written by Wan. It was released in the year 2021. Madison awakens at the hospital to find out from her sister, Sydney, that her pregnant child died in the attack. During their investigation, Shaw and Moss come upon a photo of Madison as a toddler in Weber's home and learn that Weber specializes in child reconstructive surgery. Madison's friends and family members are also used as props to set up more clammy scare scenes. It's almost as if Wan, who shares a story credit with Ingrid Bisu and screenwriter Akala Cooper, don't trust their audience enough to know or care about anything beyond PowerPoint-style bullet point dialogue. Like when Dreamboat policemen kick out Shaw, George Young tells Medicine's suspicious sibling Sydney that the doctor said your sister had three miscarriages in the last two years. We need to find that missing half, he says, of Gabriel's half-missing murder weapon, to which he responds, yeah, don't we all? Because these characters don't appear to care about each other beyond setting up the next shock scare, there's no follow-up to that throne of phrase. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for new videos.